My name is Rhiannon Giddens, and we are playing on WNXP 91.1 Nashville's Music Experience. See you on your knees as I go walking by Begging darling baby please don't leave me high and dry But I tell you right now my dear old used to be That should be dangerous say Strong and 
shades of gray That was how I would live my every day Aimless, no direction found My destiny was going through the motions of a life And then you came along with your sweet, sweet smile And then you put your cheek right next to mine And all the shades of gray slowly turned into a
You are listening to 91.1 WNXP. I am Marquise Munson inside the Sonic Cathedral with a very special guest. And I try to condense as many titles for you as I possibly can, but Grammy Award winning, Pulitzer Prize winner, fiddle player, amazing. And I'm looking at camera when I say this. <laughs> I am joined in the studio with Rianne Giddens. Thank you so much for joining me today and playing amazing music. Oh, thanks for having us. It was our, our debut performance of, of these songs, so we're, we're pretty excited. You said that, and I'm like, wow, this is, like, I, it gets me excited for your show at the Ryman Auditorium on September 15th, and we're going to talk about that, but yes, let's. I do want to congratulate you on your Pulitzer Prize winning opera with Omar, and your creative expression has sort of expanded outside of just releasing music. You have books and podcasts, you know, even video games. To, and so was that always your goal is to try out different ventures and kind of get your footing in other places outside of just making music? You know, it, that's just kind of how it's come to me. Like my whole thing is I'm still telling the same story, which is the complicated story of who gets to represent the American story, right? So like everything that I do is investigating and highlighting and uncovering and, and excavating um, all of these all of these hidden stories that really go on to make up the patchwork quilt that is the American story. And so um, if I'm given an album, I'll do it with the album. If I'm given an opportunity to write an opera, I'll do it with an opera. If I'm given an opportunity to write a book, you know what I'm saying? So I basically take the the, the tool and just use it to tell the story. Yeah, and speaking of albums, you're the one, the new album that you're releasing. And, you know, this is the first album that you've had of all original music, but the songwriting part of it has expanded over throughout your career. So when did you come up with the idea of like, okay, now is the time to release this album? I've been sitting on these songs for a while. So now is the perfect time to finally release this record. Yeah, I mean, it's a record 14 years in the making. Really, the oldest song is about 14 years old. And it just was the moment, you know, like that's how the universe works, God, life, whatever you want to call it, the Holy Spirit. That's how it works. It's like when it's time, it's time. And I've been doing these other things and telling these other stories. And it kind of coincides with also a moment of, you know, it's been a heavy burden. I, I mean, it is it is a burden. It isn't a burden. It's an honor to carry these songs and stories um, of American history. But it's also, it's, it's a lot to carry. And uh, I need a break. You know, to be honest, like I, I need to be able to investigate other kind, other parts of my musical identity. And so this has been the perfect opportunity to still, I haven't completely abandoned the mission. I never will. I'm still doing it in other places. And also even still as a part of this record and a part of the show. But it's given me a chance to kind of, you know, just sing about love a little bit and and, and have an awesome, you know, stage show with this incredible band, you know. And when I, I'm going to go back to songwriting because when you hear songs like Yet to Be and this incredible storytelling, and then you get to songs like, you know, Another, Another Life Wasted, which sounds like it could have been written in real time. And then as you mentioned, some of these songs on this record are, you know, 14 years old. So, you know, during that process for you and songwriting, like what it does songwriting process look like for you? Well, it's really, you know, like you mentioned, it's, I mean, it's another wasted life. Um, that song I wrote after, you know, learning about Khalif Browder and, and the, his tragic story. And, and also I've been learning more about the you know, carceral system and the for-profit uh, um, institutional system that we have going on that passes for justice. And, you know, connecting that to the history of slavery. And I mean, it's just like, there's there's such huge topics and I can't tackle everything at once, but I could, I, this one story moved me I wrote a song and then I was sitting on that song until until the right moment and I didn't put it on any other project because it just seemed it wanted it, it wanted a different life you know it, I didn't want to do it with banjos and fiddles I wanted to do it with a, a broader palette and a sound palette so when I started getting the idea for this record that was definitely a center of that and and also it's the idea of you know like my record Freedom Highway you know uh, 20 something <laughs> I'm so bad with 17, years. Right? 2017, yes. I think. Freedom Highway. Um, you know, the whole record is really is a civil rights record. It's an activist record. It's talking about history. This is this record is, you know, there's one or two songs kind of holding that mission, and then they're surrounded by these fun, you know, 
you know, genre defying kind of love songs and love lost and, and love defied and all of this stuff. And, you know, in some ways that kind of gives them a more of a, of a prominence, you know, so it's a different way also of, of serving, of, of serving that cause. So I want to ask what was the inspiration behind the album's title track? Well, that's, that's named after the song, You're the One, and, and You're the One is actually one of the few personal songs on the record. I don't really write from a personal point of view. Um, I've never thought I was important enough to, <laughs> to really, like, you know, make a song that could uh, affect somebody. But this was a pure emotion I felt after my son was born, and uh, I just kind of was opened up to that whole feeling and just thinking about my children and, and how beautiful that kind of uncomplicated you're a thing I got to take care of completely and you're just like completely dependent on me and now you're smiling at me and now I'm a, I'm a mess. You know, it's kind of like that. I was reading an interview you did with New York Times and you kind of mentioned, you know, sticking with the theme of songwriting. You're like, you know, you respect people that can, you know, do these songwriting, you know, these albums every couple of years. And you're just like, that's not me. Like, I, I'm not the one that's gonna, you know, have an album every two years of, original songwriting. No, I mean, I'm being honest, my first original record at 46. I mean, you know, and, but then I also wrote an opera. So it's like, <laughs> that's like three albums worth of stuff, you know? So it's like, I am writing a lot, but it's very diffuse. You know, I'm writing articles, I'm, I'm writing um, speeches, I'm writing presentations, I'm writing operas, I'm writing, you know, this and that, as well as songs. So songs is just one of the ways that I express in, instead of the only way. And so if it was the only way, I would probably write more. But I've got a lot of other, you know, ways to, to let those words out. Now, I want to go to the record now sonically because we kind of got an example of that today with the performances. You tap into really everything, like a little bit of Southern soul, some country, blues, you know, everything is on this record, rock as well. Did you tap into some of your musical influences sonically on this new record? I just like make music. You know what I'm saying? Like genre doesn't exist for me because it's all the same. I think so. I heard somebody say, I can't remember... You know, it's not genre as people, right? It's like you have the same sound and depending on who's making it, you put it in a different box. And that's the way this country is made because of racism. I mean, you know, I'm just going to say it. It's like I know the history so I can say it very confidently. Um, it's part of the way that people divide, you know, us in this country. But really, all of the music that comes out of the great uh, melting pot of, of American roots music, all of those genres that you just mentioned, they're all coming from the same origin place, right? The same mixture of cultures that forms the basis of our country. So for me, this is also an opportunity to just go, all of these things belong right next to each other. And this is what I've been saying my whole career. My very first record with T-Bone Burnett, there was Dolly Parton next to uh, uh, Nina Simone, next to next to Gene Ritchie. You know what I mean? Like I've always done that because I'm a mixed person and soul is soul. You know what I mean? And how you flip it and how you growl it and how you stretch it. It all depends on how you feel like doing it. And maybe that's affected by how you look because of where you live or whatever. But it's, it's also... What was the recording process like for this record? It was a pretty amazing thing. Uh, we went down to Criteria Records in Miami and uh, worked with producer Jack Splash, who's done a lot of hip-hop and R&B and, and a bunch of other different... Di different genres I haven't, you know, really dipped a toe into. And he brought his crack guy, crack team of, of musicians that he's worked with before. And I brought my crack team of musicians and we put them all together in a big room. We didn't do it in the computer. You know what I'm saying? We didn't do it with overdubs. We did it in the room. And then everything after that was put on top of the the sort of organic mixture of all of these people. You know, most of the people on the stage were on the record. And, and so everybody's coming from their own musical experience uh, and then kind of listening to each other and making a, a big musical conversation. It's beautiful. So now we circle back to the show, September 15th, Ramen Auditorium. How excited are you to perform these songs? Like you mentioned the recording process, but now that process is being moved to the Mother Church of Ryman. So how does it feel to, you know, be on that stage and perform these songs on this album? Well, I mean, it's exciting. It's my first headlining show at the Ryman. I've played, you know, I've opened for people. I've played like big shows, you know, like uh, com combination shows or whatever, but I've never headlined it. And um, I'm excited because it's a beautiful space. It's got a very tangled history, um, but it's a beautiful space and it's got a, you know, a great fan base, you know, who come to the Ryman. Um, Adia Victoria is opening up for, for us and she's going to be amazing. She's an incredible artist. So we're just going to like 
make make the make our our universe, you know, in in that space, which is a universe of acceptance, of conversation, of listening louder than you speak, and of making something that's better for all. I hate to make you choose between your favorites, but like favorite, like most excited. This song, I cannot wait to perform this song uh, from this record. Oh, I mean, they're all really fun. I really love singing. Um, I really love singing Yet to Be. That's the one that has Jason Isabel on there. I mean, he's not, unfortunately, in town when we're going to be in, in Nashville. I was like, dang it. Um, but I sing that verse real good, so it's fine. Uh, I love that song. I love singing that song. It sits right perfect in my voice, and I, I try to bring out my inner Bonnie Raitt when I sing that. So, Well, you can see that at the Ryman, but I appreciate you. We appreciate you coming by and giving us a sneak preview of that show. We appreciate you gracing our stages today. Well, thanks for for letting us uh, try it out on (laughs) y'all.